Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and uh, today we're going to finish our uh, our load balancer that we started yesterday, and uh, we got everything working, uh, but we just needed to get it working uh, with our SSL. So we're going to do that today, and uh, we're going to use, there's two different ways to do that in DigitalOcean, um, and we're going to use the pass-through technique. So the uh, traffic is going to be encrypted uh, even once it gets past the load balancer. Uh, since we already had SSL set up, that seems like it's going to be the easiest way uh, to do things. Uh, you can also do it a different way where uh, your SSL is, is set up at the level of the load balancer. And then that's where it, it gets unencrypted and then uh, it goes to your, your servers that are behind the load balancer. So, but we're going to do it the first way. I, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting a message here on the stream that the stream's not, not great. Uh, so let me know. I know there'll be a delay, so I'm probably here back for about a minute, but let me know how this is coming through on your end. I am streaming from home again. So uh, if you were with me yesterday, you know my network is not great. I did lower the settings. So uh, yesterday, yesterday I had kind of two ambitious settings. Hey, Sebastian. So somebody is in the live chat. Sebastian's in there. He said, hey, so I'm assuming that means he can hear me. Uh, so anyway, yesterday the settings were too ambitious. So I lowered them now, so I'm trying to get 720p. Normally I stream in 1080p, uh, but that's from work, and the work network is good enough that I could probably do 2K and it would be fine. My home network, I'm not even sure I can get 720p. Yesterday, the recording, I just I checked the recording earlier today, and the highest that you can even play it back is at 480, uh, which is not great, so... Hopefully it's good enough that you could see what I was doing, uh, but not really great. So uh, hopefully uh, next week I'll be back in uh, in the office and can stream at my normal quality. Uh, and hopefully one day I can actually get better internet at my house. So I don't know when that'll happen, but that'll be awesome if it does. Uh, so before we get started, uh, I have a few questions for for you all uh, that are watching now live, and that'll give everybody a chance to, to get in here if they're going to be a few minutes late getting in before we get started. Um, so yeah, we only have about 22 viewers right now. We usually have more than that. So Okay, Sebastian says that the video does keep stopping sometimes. Uh, so that's the thing. Okay, I've, I've had a good stream status for maybe like a minute now, so hopefully it'll it'll stay good. Yeah, normally I am, um, I do work from the office. I rarely work from home, um, but, okay, so it is, it is lagging. Mirza says it's lagging as well. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. We'll try, try to keep going. If it gets so bad that it's not, you can't even watch it at all. Um, just let me know. Maybe I can try to. Um, oh man, yeah. I don't know what I can do as far as the settings go. Uh, you know, because I actually did lower them from yesterday, so it should be. I mean, it should be a little better uh, than it was yesterday. But. If it's just terrible and totally unwatchable, I guess, you know, let me know in the live chat and then maybe, I don't know, maybe I can um, mess with the settings a little bit. And if worse comes to worse, I can just either postpone this till next week or record it and then upload it. Uh, and then at least, at least you can all watch it at some point today, uh, but it would just be a recording. I'd rather not have to do that because I do like uh, being able to do the live chat. So I'll, um, I'll give it a few more minutes uh, just to 
just to try to test it out here before we uh, try to change anything. Use the same setting as yesterday. It keeps buffering. Hmm. All right, let me go in. Let me check my settings here. Hmm. The only thing... All right, let me, um, I'm looking at my settings right now. <laughs> Patrick says, pause my torrents. I don't, I don't have anything going on in the background. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a speed test really quick to see. Maybe, maybe my internet's just slower than normal. I mean, it's the same time of day as yesterday. It ought to be, um, I mean, it ought to be comparable. So this, once I get my, uh, my upload speed, that should maybe tell me what I should set my, uh, my bit rate at. Yeah, it's not looking great. 1.5 upload. Yeah, I was getting twice as much as that yesterday for upload. Um, but still, uh, right now I only have my bit rate set at uh, 1500, so that should, I guess it should work. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, I guess I can mess with my bitrate. I'm not, I'm not super knowledgeable about um, OBS. I'm gonna bring this over actually, so you can you can see what I'm seeing. Hopefully, assuming the video quality is is good enough for you to even see this. Um, so these are my settings. Normally, um, the settings, you know, the, I have this set a lot higher. But it should, even with the upload speed that I have from the test that I just did, the 1500 bit rate should be okay. And that's the minimum that you need to stream 720p. Uh, I can't change, so as far as the YouTube settings go, I actually can't go back and change the, um, the ingestion settings as far as the, um, like what I set the, uh, the bit rate at. So like, I set it for 720p, minimum 1500 uh, kilobits per second. So I can't change that. <clears throat> That's set. I'd have to actually end this stream and start another one, you know, start another event. So. Yeah, and I'm looking here at my my stream status. I'm not I'm not actually hitting that 1500. I'm coming close, but I'm not hitting that. I'm definitely under it. Okay, I just I just popped up over. Wow, now I hit 2000. It's just really uh, it's lagging on 360. Okay, so uh, in the live chat, I'm I'm saying it's lagging on 360p. Yeah, it's it's actually it's all over the place. I'm watching the stream, the status here, you know, on my machine, and I'm getting anywhere from two thousand kilobits per second, all the way down to like seven hundred, and now it's uh, six hundred. It's just bouncing around like crazy. All right. Well, at least before before I change this or do something else, uh, let me at least ask a few things that I did want to ask you <laughs> at the beginning here. And um, one is, I got a new microphone and I just set it up. So I'd like to know if this sounds better or worse than what I had yesterday and what I normally have. So normally I just use the built-in mic uh, that's built into either the the iMac or MacBook Pro. Uh, but I did buy another mic. It just came in yesterday, and I set it up. So uh, it was on sale. It was pretty cheap. So I thought, why not? It had good reviews on Amazon. 
I uh, thought, you know, at, at the very least, it could it might be a little bit better than what the built-in mic does, so just let me know. It might be hard to tell since the video quality is so, uh, the stream quality is so bad right now. Um, also, I had, um, I had someone comment on the colors that I was using, uh, saying it was really hard on their eyes, so... I, uh, at first I thought they were talking about my uh, my code editor, but then I realized after they posted an example of something that would be easier on the eyes that the uh, background color looked pretty much exactly the same. So I think maybe they were talking about my terminal. So I switched it up. Uh, so this is what I normally have is black, just completely black background and I think that was just the default dark theme that came with iTerm 2. So I, ed I changed it a little bit and made the background more gray. I don't know if, if anyone else has been having that issue where that's been hard on them, hard on their eyes to see. Uh, let me know. I don't have a problem keeping it with this gray. This actually matches a little bit better with my uh, code editor anyway. So I may just keep it like that. But uh just wanted to know your thoughts on that. Should I change it to something totally different? Uh, is anybody else having issues with seeing things? Um, uh, the only other things I wanted to do, I had um, Oliver uh, on uh, Mensa on Twitter requested that I just go over the, uh, the WordPress API just a little bit about how I'm getting data from there. So I thought I might take a minute to do that. Uh, so we'll see, but Assuming this stream is watchable, I will do that. Otherwise, uh, maybe I'll just make a video. Uh, and I also had a comment. This is the last last question. I also had a comment yesterday saying that I sounded uh, depressed. So I wasn't depressed, but it may it got me thinking. Uh, maybe I sound depressed all the time when I do videos, and I don't want to because I'd I'd rather sound um, happy or at the very least like neutral and not depressed. <laughs> Uh, because I don't think it would be enjoyable to listen to somebody uh, who sounded depressed the whole time. So let me know if it does seem like I sound uh, depressed. All right, so I'm getting some feedback. So it looks like Patrick and Sebastian say the uh, the mic sounds good. So awesome. I mean, I'm not. I'm just talking. So I'm I'm not really expecting like you know I need excellent quality sound. I mean, maybe if I if I keep streaming and I get you know a lot of people watching, at some point maybe I'll get like a, an actual like a really good mic. Um, but for now, I think this is this is fine. I've really haven't had complaints about the uh, the audio quality. Uh, and Patrick also uh, says plus one for WP API. So I think I'll um, I I will go over that then. Let's see. I'm going to check out the stream stats just to see what... Okay, Sebastian says it is cutting the sound occasionally, but uh, that's probably a video problem. Also, uh, Sebastian also wants to know about the WP API. Okay, cool. I didn't realize so many people were interested in that. I would have, uh, I would have done more with it. So it looks like most... There are some people that are getting a 720p stream. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't say how good that stream is, how much buffering, but at least the majority of people are actually getting a 720p stream right now. Um, some are actually getting like really low, like 240. Uh, I'm going to here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attempt at least to go over some WP API stuff and I'm going to blow up the, uh, the text. I'm going to increase the font size as big as I can. Okay. Sebastian says the, the delay, uh, delay for him is only about five to 10 seconds. I can, there was a setting. I wonder if I can get to it. Uh, there was a setting about whether I would go for uh, low latency or less buffering, and I almost I always pick low latency so that there's less uh, lag time between what I am saying and doing and and when you see it. But maybe I should, if I can still do that, I'm gonna try to switch that back. 
uh, to less buffering. I don't know if some of the settings are, are locked in and you can't change them after you've made the uh, made the video. Actually, I can change this. So I'm going to switch it up for less buffering. Hopefully that makes a difference. So I've saved that. I assume that'll that'll go uh, take effect immediately. Uh, so there may be more of a delay than normal between what I say and do and, and when you see and hear that. But hopefully that'll there'll be a, a little less buffering. Okay. Uh, Daw says it's good for 720p. Uh, Patrick went down to 480p and it's buffering less. Okay. So, oh, um, sorry about that. Like I said, normally if you're just watching and, and you haven't watched my earlier streams, uh, this is an anomaly here. I don't normally stream from this location. Usually there's no problem with the stream. You can stream at 1080p, and as long as your connection is okay, it'll be fine. Uh, today I'm just on a bad connection, so next week it'll be back to normal. I, I'm just, um, I have uh, pink eye right now. I got it from my kids, or conjunctivitis, whatever you want to call it. And it's very contagious, so I don't want to spread it around to my coworkers. So that's why I'm working from home. So, uh, so I'm I'm fine to work. I don't feel sick. It's just my eyes are really red and um, uh, swollen. So, anyway, it, I should be fine by next week, and uh, and everything should be back to normal. So let me go over the uh, the WordPress API just very quickly, probably just about five minutes. <laughs> Mirsa says there's hardly any buffering on 144p, but I feel like I need new glasses. So yeah, awesome. So if you if you wanted to uh, to perform really well, drop it down to 144p and uh, and that should work. So. All right, but let me bring up, I know I already have open on, on one of my tabs, one of my screens somewhere, I have the WordPress API stuff open to see it. All right, so I'm going to bring this over on this screen, just so you can see. This is the output that I get from WordPress in JSON format. And let me, let me make this as big as I can. Uh, so this is the, the parsed version. I mean, this is really how it comes, just this big string here. But it's it's JSON data, and um, so you can see I get this. This is a custom post type that I set up. Uh, it's the a major event custom post type. So basically, I get the title, I get the content of the post here, in, including the HTML tags. And then um, I have some custom things coming in just from some plugins that I did. So one plugin I actually made myself. And then the other plugins I found that other people had made uh, to work with the uh, WordPress API. So I get some extra data about my images that I have attached to this, this post. And um, just some extra fields. I'm using the advanced custom fields plugin. I get some extra fields here that I added in here. So this is what it looks like. I'll show you in WordPress what I have going on. Okay. Yeah, let me show you. It's not... If you have a newer version of WordPress... Uh, so let me show you... Really, it's the plugins that, that matter. Uh, so I'm not... I don't even have everything active yet, so I have some plugins that are for um, for caching and things that I don't even have activated yet, but I will activate it at some point. Uh, but it used to be, like a year ago, if you wanted to use the API, you actually had to download a plugin to activate the API. Now it's part of WordPress core. So... Um, you don't if you have WordPress and you've updated any updated it any time probably within the last few months or so, uh, then you already have the WordPress API. It's already working. You don't have to do anything to get it to work. All you have to do is go 
then I'll, I'll go back here just briefly. I know it's going to be hard to see this, so I'll read it out as much as I can here. This is just the address of my WordPress site, which in this case is wp.catechetics.com, and then you type in um, slash wp hyphen json slash wp slash v2, and then you probably don't, you, you may not have any custom post types, but you will just have regular posts or pages. So if you type in slash posts, then you'll get the list. So if you went into your browser right now and you had a WordPress site running and you typed in what I, what I just said, uh, then you would automatically get a list of your post in JSON format. So it's that easy. And in fact, if, if you don't have a WordPress site running and you, act, you typed in what I have here for this WordPress site, you would be able to see it as well. This is totally open. It's, you know, it's public, um, publicly accessible. So it's, it's super easy. Now I've customized mine a bit. So I'm using the advanced custom fields plugin to add some fields to my post type. So I've, I've added in some custom post types myself. Uh, with and that's the only plugin that I did, you know, completely custom. Is the, the to actually make the custom post types. I did it in a plugin, and um, I can show that. I'm not. I wonder if I have if I still have it up and I haven't closed it out. I'll show it. Uh, it looks like I closed it out. So maybe maybe I'll I'll just show a little bit of it. But if the quality's bad, it's going to be hard to read it anyway. So when I when I get down to that plugin, maybe I'll show you a little bit of the code how I did it. Um, so basically I'm using advanced custom fields and then I have this extra plugin to just expose those fields to the REST API, which is why I can see them in my API. Um, I normally by default, the API doesn't give you the URL of the image. It just tells you, Hey, here's an image and here's the, you know, the number of the image. Uh, so it's not really that useful. So I have this better featured images that gives me a lot of extra data about the images and uh, URLs for all the different sizes of the image that exists. So it's uh, a lot more useful. Here's the uh, the custom plugin that I made. So let's um, let's go to the editor screen on this just to show you what it's like. So. Making a plugin in WordPress uh, yourself is super easy. You just pop this stuff at the beginning. I mean, you got to have the, you know, your PH, it's, it's all in PHP. So you have to know a little bit about PHP at least. And uh, you just put this stuff at the beginning just to name your plugin, a little description and author name. Uh, and then here, I actually, I left this in, commented out just as a template, just to show. So if you want to do a custom post type, you just use the function create new type and then you can set up all your labels so it's these labels like this is how it will appear in the uh, in the admin panel okay so however you want it to display that's how you you put it up just on the back and in the admin panel for WordPress and then these here are more like what it will actually do um, like what the slug's going to be, uh, how it'll show up on the API, and uh, and if you're doing some other PHP code with it, uh, you can tell it what it supports. So what fields you want it to be able to use of the normal field. So in this case, I wanted it to use the title field. I wanted it to be able to use the the regular editor, uh, the excerpt field, and then the, the thumbnail. You can assign it taxonomies, and uh, you can also do custom taxonomies if you want. So I actually did in this case. I had some custom taxonomies, one name brand, one name um, body material options. Uh, this was I pulled this from another site that I did. I just copied the same plugin and changed. I just edited it to fit what I needed for this site. Um, you can exclude from search if you want. Uh, this one you need, it says show in REST. We do want it to show up in the REST API, so we hit true, okay? And we want it to show up in the menu as well. So that's it. I mean, that's basically you make a post. Uh, down here below, you need to... Let me scroll down. So at the very end, you need to add the action, okay? So you need to create the new type. So 
you don't have to do it every time. You see, I just put all these together. I lumped them all together, and then I just did it once. Uh, I also did some taxonomies. I'm not using custom taxonomies for this site, but I had them. It was already in the plugin, so I just left it in, uh, commented out in case I, uh, in case I really, you know, wanted to use it later on. It would be easy. So uh, this is how you do a taxonomy. Uh, it it's pretty similar, you know. You're just setting, you know. Here's how it's going to display, and you know, here's some of the values. I want to show it in rest. I want to show it in the menu. Oh, here's what the slug's going to be. Okay, so not not terrible to do if if you if you see it done once, you can just copy and paste it and change the values, and it's you know, it's super easy. Um, this is just a little custom thing that I needed. Um, I didn't want to display the normal title field in my post, my custom post. I wanted it to be different, so this like automatically changes that. So, but that's that's pretty much it for that plugin. I'm gonna check the live chat just in case I've totally lost somebody. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, John says buffering has stopped on 720p, so that's awesome. So maybe uh, changing that setting uh, did help a bit. Uh, Ghetto Street says not WordPress. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be about WordPress. I just wanted to go over it quickly because I had I had a request to go over the WordPress API. Uh, just really quickly, some of the other plugins I'm using that makes this easier. I'm using this um, filter field WP REST API filter fields. Um, this lets me return only the fields that I want, so I can make the um, the response, the JSON response that I get from WordPress when I make that call is going to be a lot smaller because I'm cutting out all the things that I don't need. I'm only getting the data that I do need. So that's really useful. Uh, pure taxonomies. This allows me to get normally, uh, you by default, you don't get a lot of information about the taxonomies back. You just get the number of, like the ID number of that taxonomy, which is not that useful. If you want the actual like slugs for the taxonomies, which is more useful, you can use this plugin to get uh, to get that. And I'm talking about like if you want the actual name of the tag instead of just the number of that tag or that category, you can use that. Here's the cache that I have. When I activate this, the um, the REST uh, API calls will be cached. So it doesn't actually have to go to the database and get the information to put together the, um, the JSON data. Once that's already been done, it'll be cached, uh, and then that'll be ready. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to edit the plugin a little bit uh, because I, I want it to, when WordPress gets updated, I want to automatically flush the cache so that the people editing these posts don't have to remember to flush the cache themselves. So other than that small edit, uh, which it, on the uh, GitHub page for this plugin, it actually walks you through how to do that edit. Uh, I'm, I'm basically just going to use this plugin as is. Uh, I just don't have it activated now because there's still a lot of uh, content being added. Um, filter tools. Okay, this just adds in. When I first started using the API, um, some of the the way you made an API call was different and um, then they switched it and I just didn't feel like learning the new way so I downloaded this so that I could keep using the old way so eventually I'll learn the new way and I probably won't use this but for now it just saved me a little bit of time and this is multiple post types so uh, normally you need to make one call one API call per post type well that stinks because you don't want to have to make another call but also um, in in next, which is what we're using, um, uh, that's that's kind of what we use to uh, bootstrap our React project here. Um, their default method of making API calls and having that work with server side rendering only lets you make one API call. So um, you um, 
you want to only make one. I'm actually still working on trying to figure out how to make multiple API calls and make that work. And I did, re I read something recently that made me think that it's possible, but I haven't been able to get it to work yet. So this, this helps out, uh, because when I, on pages where I need to make multiple calls, uh, get multiple post types, I can get it there. So anyway, so that's how I have it set up. Uh, you don't need any of these plugins to make the API work. This just makes, they all just make it easier to work with the API and easier to customize it. You could, you could do all this yourself uh, if you were really good with PHP and with WordPress and not use other people's plugins, but uh, it saves me a lot of time because I'm not, I'm, I'm just a very, like very much a beginner with PHP. So uh, I don't, I'm not really confident that I could do all that myself. Uh, without it taking forever. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the WordPress part of this. <laughs> Hopefully, um, whoever was interested in the API, I, I gave you enough here that you could you know get started and work with it a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions. I've been working with it for um, at least a year now, maybe a little over a year. Yeah, I, actually, it has been more like a year and a half now that I've been working with the API. So, um, not not an expert, but I definitely have some experience with it. Oh shoot! So aim high says too much buffering. So it looks like the stream's getting bad again. Um, let me check the the status here. Yeah, it's definitely below. Yeah, it's it's getting the the problem. It looks like I'm I'm looking at uh, some of the data of like what I'm outputting uh, on my end, and uh, it seems like the problem is it's just fluctuating so much. On average, I'm it's like a decent stream, but it. It drops down really low, and then it'll go up really high, back and forth. So I'm I'm really sorry about the stream. What I'm going to do at this point, I mean, we actually don't even have that many viewers. So I'm assuming that probably the stream is that bad that I'm just losing people because this is way below the normal amount of viewers that I have. Uh, so... I think, sorry, I was just reading the live chat again. Um, yeah, the uh, WordPress site is hosted on DigitalOcean. The, the site that I just showed you is on DigitalOcean. So I'm going to get rid of uh, this stuff. We don't need that. The uh, the actual setting up of the uh, the load balancer is uh, for the SSL is going to be pretty simple, and I think we can get through it uh, pretty quickly. So, all right, since the stream's getting worse, okay. Um, if it's getting worse, then. All right, let me, uh, I, I think I'm going to put this up to a vote in the live chat because I'm really, I'm torn on this and I, I can't see what you're seeing. So I, I'm not really feeling how bad this stream really is. If it's that bad, I'm going to put it up to a vote and I'm going to give maybe like uh, three minutes or so before I make a decision. Should I uh, go through with setting up this uh, load balancer uh, completely with the SSL and everything? even though the, uh, the stream quality is pretty low, or should I uh, shut down the stream and just do it right now and make a video? Or option three, should I just wait and do it next week whenever I'm at a better connection? Okay, so I have one, one vote here. Uh, Aim High says, can we reschedule, reschedule the stream? I can definitely reschedule it. I will have to reschedule for next week because I won't be, I won't be able to get anywhere with a good uh, connection until, until Monday. So 
So I know there's a, there's going to be a delay until um, everyone can respond to that question. So I'm just going to wait a minute for uh, for that. I feel really bad about this. Um, I know I even I mentioned yesterday I was going to do this. We're going to set up this load balance balancer. So uh, I'm really sorry that this is not working out. The stream was not nearly this bad yesterday. Okay, Patrick says keep going. So we're we're split now. Okay, I'll give it just just a little bit longer to see if anyone else responds. Um, okay, now it says the stream's getting better. See, that's it. Just it just keeps going back and forth as being really good and really bad. I tell you what, I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try to get go through this, and then after I'm done, I'll check out the video and just see what the quality is. If the quality is terrible, even on the recording then maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll re-record it or I'll do it, I'll go through it again. Like maybe when I stream on Monday, we'll take like the first part of it and I'll just review what what we did just kind of really quickly. Um, and then that way, you know, maybe there are some people that are getting a decent stream. So, uh, so let's go for it. So if you see here, I'm in the, uh, basically the same screen we left off at uh, yesterday. Uh, we had, I think we left off here actually. So here's our two, uh, our two droplets that we had cloned and it's being, uh, we have the load being balanced between these two. They're both up. The only thing that I did differently is I started um, the, uh, the node server with PM2. Uh, and on this one, it's just started just straight out with um, uh, just the the regular server. Uh, so basically, the only difference is this this is being this process is being run by by PM2. It'll like auto restart and things like that. So not really a big deal. And so no no really significant changes. So I have linked in the description to this video uh, kind of the the DigitalOcean instructions for setting up an SSL pass through on their load balancers. So. If you want to follow along with that or read some more details as we're going, then you know go ahead and click that link. I'm going to keep it on my other screen, so uh, there'll be more room to actually see you know what I'm doing. Uh, but right now, uh, we're we're going past step one. We've already completed a lot of these steps, so I'm going to scroll down all the way to. Let's go with step three. We've assigned, okay, so step three is assigning the domain name to the load balancer. So we have assigned a, um, a subdomain to the load balancer. So it was test.catechetics.com. And uh, yesterday, I think some people were able to go to that and it worked. I was not able to go to that. It didn't work for me. I think it was just a caching thing. So, uh, if you go to that and it, and it works great, um, I'm just, I'm going to assume that it works because it's not really, you just point the, uh, you know, the A record to the, to the domain name of the, uh, load balancer. So I'm going to go back out to the, the actual load balancer here just to see. So... That's the domain name that we pointed to. So for me, I'm just going to go to that domain name just to show like, hey, it's working still, just to verify that. Uh, but you should also be able to go to test.catechetics.com and it should work. Like I said, it's not working for me.
All right, so now we, um, I'm gonna skip step three just for a minute, okay? We know that we're gonna have to point that A record of the main domain name, so just catechetics.com. We're gonna have to point that soon, but I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Step four, configuring Nginx to use the SSO. So we've already configured this before, and if you remember yesterday, we just commented out all the SSL stuff. So to go back in, all we have to do is just take out the uh, the comment um, tags, which in for the nginx config, it's just a uh, hashtag. So we just need to take out those hashtags, and then it should work again. We've already copied over all the SSL configs from that that original droplet that's live right now on catechetics.com. So everything's set up. Uh, so that's why I say this is going to be actually pretty easy because we don't even have to generate new certificates or anything. So almost all the steps uh, we don't need. Really the only two steps we're going to have to, um, uh, to worry about for this is uh, I think step six, which is actually adding the, uh, the SSL pass-through rule to the load balancer. And then we are going to have to point the, uh, the correct domain name. So... This needs to be done quickly. I don't want the main site to be down for too long. So what I'm going to do first is... The first thing I'm going to do is change the records. So I'm going to bring this over. And this is our, our second droplet right now, which we have... We have it running, and I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to that configuration file that we edited, and I'm going to enable the SSL stuff again. I'm going to do this ahead of time. I know I'm doing the steps out of order, but I want there to be as little downtime as possible. So I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to switch the, uh, the domain name. So I'm going to go in. Okay, Patrick said the test domain worked briefly and then an unexpected error occurred. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder what's going on with... Um, that's just It's just really odd because obviously um, the load balancer itself seems to be working. And I'm not even getting, it's, it's saying this site can't be reached. So I'm getting uh, an entirely different error. Patrick, whenever you get that error, is it like basically a gray screen with just some text right in the middle, like centered in the middle saying an unexpected error has occurred? Okay, it works for Sebastian. Okay, so because Patrick's an unexpected error has occurred sounds like it's the error that comes through when, uh, when there's a problem with Node, like you know, there was some type of issue, so... Yeah, refreshing, it blinks the site and then blows up. Patrick, can I ask, uh, what um, browser are you using and do you know what version of that browser it is? I'm just, I'm thinking maybe there is some some issue with my site that I don't know about. Uh, I guess I should ask too, if you go to catechetics.com without the test, does that work for you? Sebastian says that error happened uh, yesterday after you set it up. All right, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that error is. Let me, um, I'm gonna go here on, in another browser and just to see I just kind of wonder, like, maybe one of the, um, oh, okay, Patrick says, never mind, uh, uBlock Origin was blocking Cloudflare, it works after whitelisting it. Okay, cool, so hopefully we, uh, that error is not an issue, I guess we'll find out. Uh, so, anyway, so let me bring my terminal back over, and... 
I know I said at the beginning I talked about changing the color, but I guess the uh, when I changed the color, it only applied to this one tab. So I'm not going to take the time to change it again. Um, after fresh. Okay, Patrick is using Chrome. It should definitely work with Chrome. Okay, so I think it's going to be fine. I think it'll work. So I'm going to do the, um, I'm actually going to check the uh, live chat from yesterday. I had it somewhere. Did I have it here? Yeah, I have it. Okay, so, oh, actually, I just saw this right before I, um, right before I started the stream. So I just wanted to share this with you all. I'm not really looking for work right now, but uh, this came up when I was looking at Stack Overflow on something, and this looks like an amazing job. Like, the salary's awesome. It's remote work, or if you want to go there, it's in Florida, uh, which which is a nice place to be. Uh, all of it just looks really basic. Like, they want basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript. They mentioned, like, jQuery in here. Um, really simple stuff. They use WordPress. So... Anyway, check that out. Senior website developer at Central Reach. They said they're taking, as long as you have like two years experience, uh, they're, they're taking that. So um, anyway, check that out. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just saw that and thought that's a great opportunity I would like to share with you all. So I'm going to check. Here's the live stream from yesterday. So I actually save the live streams because I don't always get to read everything and I want to make sure that I see everything and um, can can answer questions in case I forgot. So I'm going back here just because there were a lot of good commands that I used yesterday that I want to use again today. Uh, and I think... Yeah, what was it? It was something like slash. Is it not gonna? <laughs> I think my find's not gonna work for this command because it's all together. Hmm. I was trying to get around having to look up um, how to get to the config file, and I can't find it for some reason. So I will just go in here and try to remember what it was. I think I can. So um, sudo nano um, etc. And was it? Nginx, yeah, it was, and it was sites um, enabled, and then default, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, I should have should had more confidence in myself that I remembered that, so, uh, okay, so here's our config file. So like I said, I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to take out all those places where I um, I had commented some things out. And then this should make it so that it has the exact same setup as our, our main server, which is what we want. I'm only going to do this for one of these because uh, we're going to we're going to end up uh, deleting the third uh, droplet that we set up because I'm only going to run two. So, so config. Yeah, it should be good when we do these few last few lines, and then we should be good. And I'm just gonna format that a little better. All right, and that's it. That's that's the only thing we changed yesterday. So. Uh, to get out of nano, you hit Control X and then yes, and yeah, we want to rewrite that. All right, so now we need to restart Nginx, 
And that was... I'll probably have to sudo this. CTO... No. Oh, I spelled it wrong. There we go. Okay. All right, so now this should be set up um, the way we want it to be able to use um, the main address that we want with um, with our SSL. So here's what you're going to do. I'm going to say this out loud so I have it right in my head, uh, the steps that we need to take, because I want them all to go really smoothly so we have minimal downtime. So what we're going to do then is we need to remove, we need to point the main domain, catechetics.com, to this IP address. We need to remove the... Um, load um, the the droplet three so um, I'm sorry I'm getting distracted I've gotten calls from uh, my wife and now my my mother-in-law so I just want to make sure everything's all right let me uh, my wife left a message so I'm just gonna listen to it while while I'm doing this to make sure that you know, none of my kids are, got hurt or anything. And it sounds like I have like two minutes of just random noise in the background. So. All right, it sounds like my wife accidentally called me and then left... left a message sounds like the baby's crying in the background okay so i guess i'm assuming that that's if that was a mistake and then the same thing it seems like my mother-in-law accidentally called me as well and left a message that's um an insane coincidence <laughs> so sorry about the interruption but i was just worried that i got two calls right then since I know that my wife knows I'm streaming right now all right so we're gonna remove this uh, this droplet we're gonna add our original droplet so we'll have these two and we need to set up the rules the uh, pass-through rules on our our load balancer okay so let's do that so let me go um, here, let me log in. I'm going to log in to our domain name uh, registrar so that we can change where our domain name's pointing. The only good thing is for a lot of people, it's going to be cached. So if we mess it up, some people won't even notice that we messed it up because they'll still be going you know, pointing to a different place. So we should be okay, at least for a little, it'll buy us some time. Normally the, uh, the, the caching, uh, messes me up because I can't tell whether I've done something right or not. But in this case, it may be helpful. Okay, so on my other screen, I'm going to do the login, and then I'll bring it over. if anybody else uses um, Enom for hosting, but their site just seems really slow. Or not for hosting, but for domains, I mean. 
Okay, so here's what we need to do. All right, hey Thor, how's it going? Thor just joined us. Um, yeah, actually, no, I'm I'm not I'm not early. He said that uh, I'm early or he's late. Uh, two uh, start time was two p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So uh, right now it's three p.m. Eastern, almost three. So we actually haven't gotten through that much yet. We had some more technical difficulties, which basically just my network is not really great right now. Um, but we're at the point now where we're going to um, point the main domain to our load balancer. And then we're going to set up the rules for the SSL pass through. And hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to go here and copy. I'm going to copy this. IP address. I know I, I sh this should be the same IP address for this test and that one, but just on the off chance that I had it wrong, I wanted to copy the original. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Hopefully, I don't get you know calls and messages immediately from people at work saying the site's down. What's going on? That actually happens really often when I do something like this. It's like 30 seconds after it's down, somebody happens to look at it. All right, so that's there. Let's move. Um, we need to move our droplet over. Let's add our original CI droplet. Let's remove this droplet okay great and why is ci react down no okay so for some reason that's down maybe the move made it down briefly i can um i can go into there quickly if i need to and see what's going on Let me uh, at least set up these rules for now, because uh, we still have one that, that's up and running. So uh, let's go, actually, I think I just need to go to, let's go to settings. All right, and if you're following along in the documentation, I believe we're on step six. Yes, we're on step six. Okay, so we need to go to these forwarding rules and edit those. And we need to add a new rule for HTTPS. And we need to pass. No, I need to. Not a new certificate. <laughs> I need to pass through. There we go. And we don't. We want port. Um, there we go. HTTPS should be port 443. I'm going to save that rule. Okay. And that's been updated. And. That should be it. That should be all we need to do. So let me check it out. All right, so this is at least still working. Although, like I said, there could be some caching stuff. So uh, that may not be the best test. I do want to go back out here to our droplets and see if we still have one down. No, and it actually came back up. So the downtime must have just been temporary due to the switch uh, behind the load balancer. So what I want to do now is I would like to purposely bring one of these droplets down and uh, make changes also on one of the droplets that I don't make on the other one uh, just to kind of get a test of, like, is the load balancing really working? Um, are we going to have downtime still? So I, I want to see make sure this works like, like we want it to, to where we have zero downtime, even if one goes down uh, temporarily. So let's come over first test. And let me go to this original. So here's the original. I know this is super small, so let me uh, make this bigger.
goodness. All right. All right, so that's a, a bit bigger. Probably can do do a little more. Okay, so um, I can do PM to stop next. Okay, so that should be stopped. So since that's stopped, if we go to catechetics.com, uh, it should still work. I'm going to click around. Normally, if it's stopped, I can get maybe like two or three pages that have been cached and... Um, with our service worker, and then the rest don't work. So right now it looks like it's okay. I'm gonna go in um, on my other screen in an incognito window in Chrome and try it here as well. Uh-oh, it's not working there, so we did get a bad gateway. So let's see, might have an issue. So it's giving us, let me bring this over. I'm getting a 502 bad gateway error when I try to visit this site um, from here. Let me do a um, another refresh here. Okay, yeah, it's it's still working here, but I'm, I'm assuming that this is some type of caching thing that's making it still work since I'm not getting, you know, basically since I'm getting the error. Okay, and I'm starting to get some weird stuff happening here. Okay. So, let's see, something's not working. Thor says it's working. So, uh, are you are you saying the site's working for you? I do want to make sure. I don't know that these IP addresses will even work anymore since they're behind the uh, the load balancer. <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure what's going on here, but that IP address worked, and it shouldn't because I I did just bring down that that server. I don't know why it's still saying it's healthy too. It should not be healthy. What is going on? Did I not bring that down? It should be stopped, yeah. Yeah, it is it is stopped. What is going on? Yeah, this is... Okay, so Thor mentions in the live chat, it seems like the load balancing does act, actually does not recognize the 502 as unhealthy. So that was our thing uh, yesterday. We had we had tested it out, and it seemed like it was recognizing uh, the um, uh, the bad gateway error as the uh, droplet actually being down. But now it seems like that's not the case. So I'm going to bring this back up. I'm going to bring this back up and see if I can get rid of that error just to uh, make sure that this is possibly what we're doing. Now that, yeah, look at this. As soon as I brought that up, immediately it started working again. So, yeah, so this tells me, at least this hints to the fact that maybe it is not recognizing that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut down um, Nginx so that this droplet will actually be completely offline. It should show up as, as being totally down. So what's the, what's the command? I'm going to have to look up the command for how to um, stop Nginx. I assume it's just stop. Yeah. Okay, so now we should be getting a message that this is down.
I think it does update automatically. I shouldn't have to refresh it, but I was just impatient and really <laughs> I wanted to see. Looks like something went wrong. That's not what I want to see. Networking domains. No. Hmm. What happened? This is really weird uh, because when I um, when I go to networking, I should get I should get an option to go to load balancer. So this is really weird. Hey, Rohan, uh, glad you could join us. Uh, Rohan just joined in the live chat and said, uh, said I'm late. Okay, so in case you didn't catch what just happened here, um, the way to get to the, the uh, admin panel for load balancing in DigitalOcean is to go to networking, and then there should be an option to go to the load balancer. Let's see, I'll, I'll show you. Here, this is what it should look like. I should click networking and then I should have this here. Uh, what's happened now is that I don't have that. Um, it's not showing that at all. So I can't even get in to see what's going on. I'm going to go, I'm just going to switch, try to figure out something here. Now, as far as I can tell, it's still running. All right, so it's still working because we, we did shut down. We did shut down uh, Nginx on our main droplet but on our secondary droplet it's still running uh, so both the, the node server and nginx are still running uh, so I'm just gonna verify that yeah it's still running so it's probably directing everything to there so it seems like it's still working let me know in the live chat if you tried to go there catechetics.com and if it's not working for you but I am a little bit, I'm going to leave this up just in case we need to switch back. The, the test.catechetics.com, I don't know. I mean, that's still pointing to the load balancer, so I don't know what would happen if it went there. Uh, looks like you don't have any droplets. This is my own. I actually don't even have any droplets going right now. Okay, so I went, I've switched to my own account, my personal account, and yeah, so this is what it's supposed to look like. I don't know why it didn't work. So I'm going to switch back to my work account. And 
and go to networking. There we go. Okay, maybe it was just some some glitch um, in the uh, DigitalOcean UI. Let's see. I wonder what they built this with. This is actually React. So I don't know if you can see this. It's really small, but this uh, plugin shows me what it's built with. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, that this this in fact is a uh, the front end is React. Very cool. And it looks like they use jQuery and React together, just like just like I did on this site. So I'm not the only one <laughs> that uses it, even though it's probably better not to. All right, so let's check out the load balancers. It says there's an issue. That's that's what I want to see. Here we go. And this should be down. Okay, so. What's this is saying? Uh oh, error connection refused. Sebastian says he got an error connection refused when he tried to go to the site. It's working for Thor. For uh, Julio, it's working. Uh, and he's in Chile. Or, how do you actually pronounce Chile if you live there? Is it is it Chile or I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't want to be like um, mispronouncing your country and, and uh, being disrespectful like that. So let me know. Okay, so so it is Chile, not Chile. Okay. Thank you. I thought it was. I I, I remember um, when I, I took a bunch of Spanish courses and we would, um, I'm pretty sure that's how it was pronounced in those courses. So uh, sorry, I mispronounced that at first. All right. So, all right. It's the site's not working for Rohan. I wonder... Okay, Carlos says it's up in Brazil. Here's what I, I'm wondering. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is not possible, but if, like, let's say that the old um, IP address is, is cached as where the A record should be pointing to, uh, then maybe maybe that's causing an error. So for, for those of you who aren't able to get to the site, Try this out. Go to um, type in this IP address. If you, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it, and I'm also going to say it just in case you you can't see this. Forty five dot fifty five dot one nineteen dot one four two. Because that should, regardless of any caching issues, that should take you directly to the load balancer. And if that works for you, then then we should be good. Temporarily, there'll probably be some people who can't reach the site until the um, until the caching has run its course. Thanks, Thor. Thor, put that uh, the IP address in the live chat, so you can just copy and paste that, and uh, let me know if that works. It's actually super helpful having um, so many of you testing this out uh, right here. I mean, otherwise, um, it would it would be nearly impossible for me to get you know, instantaneous feedback from people all over the world uh, on whether or not this is working. So, so th this is awesome. Thank you. Okay, so Sebastian says the IP is redirecting to catechetics.com, which is giving an error. For Rohan, it did work now. All right. Um, so, but I, I doubt it's it's a browser error, but on the off chance that it is, what browser are you using, uh, Sebastian? And I'm going to try... I'm just going to try it out in some other browsers, some of my other screen. So 
So this should be, actually I'll show you. So um, I'm gonna use Opera now and I set up the VPN to be like as if it's coming from somewhere else. So I'm thinking that that should hopefully get over any uh, caching things as well, just to check it out. Okay, so that's working. And I think I can set, all right, let's set it to come from somewhere really far away from where I am. So let's try it from Singapore. Okay, so that's working cool. It's actually, why is it not loading? There should be an image right there, uh, so I'm not sure why it's not loading that image. Because that's the wrong... Um, It's the wrong URL. Oh, I see what happened. I recently um, edited this image. I uh, optimized it, and so I needed to change the name here. And uh, I guess I forgot that I had been using media queries and had it in those as well. So I guess on certain screen sizes, that image isn't showing up. Let me test that out by expanding it, maybe. Let me go to an interior page too. Yeah, okay. So so it does work. I just, for that particular page, I forgot to change it. I'll have to make sure I change that. So I'm going to add that to my list right now so I don't forget it. Add it to the, uh, to the Trello board. Okay. Okay, so um, Sebastian said uh, he tested it on Chrome and Edge, so I'm assuming it doesn't work on either one. Um, Thor says it's definitely a DNS cache error, uh, which I'm hoping it's that, because then that means I didn't do anything wrong, uh, and it'll just resolve itself uh, with time. Rohan says if he uses 4G, and Rohan, I'm assuming that this is a he. Correct me if, if you're not um, a he. Um, but I'm assuming Rohan is, is a boy's name. So, um, so on 4G, it won't load, but it works on the, uh, the home broadband. Okay, so, yeah, so this does seem like, I, I agree with Thor here, it does seem like a DNS thing since there doesn't seem to be, I mean, it's it's with browsers and everything. Okay, so Rohan is, in fact, it's, it's uh, a he, so awesome. Sorry about that. That's just not really a common name uh, where I'm from, so just wanted to be sure. I've only heard the name Rohan two other times, and one is from the the country in Lord of the Rings, and the other one is um, a character's name in um, a cartoon. Um, what was it called? Legend of Korra. And I watched that with my kids. Okay, Sebastian asks... Uh, it says, yesterday we set up the load balancer on React 2 and React 3, but now it's on uh, CI React and CI React 2. And it does work on Sebastian's phone. Okay, so I'm, I'm going with uh, DNS error. So I'll probably check it again, but only on 4G it works. So what we'll do is um, it won't really work for me to keep checking it since it is working for me. Uh, I guess I could try it on my 4G quickly just to see. 
since I can't get the error, uh, I won't be able to check. But what we can do is on uh, Monday, when I stream on Monday, then uh, if, if any of you can join me on Monday as well, then especially those of you who are having the errors now, we can see if you still have the errors or if they work. Because by the time Monday comes around, if it hasn't sorted itself out, then uh, I have to look for a different different cause for the error because it definitely should have sorted itself out by then. So right now I'm checking on my phone on my 4G network. Okay, so it does work on my network. So there's really not any uh, good way that I know of for me to test this error since I can't recreate it. So it's it's just going to have to wait. Uh, just going to have to give it some time and check it out. Uh, but anyway, to answer Sebastian's kind of question, uh, confusion, so yeah, what we did, and let me go back to this just in case uh, you, you, didn't, you didn't catch what we did, you didn't see it, maybe you're just joining in a little bit later. Uh, so initially, did we ever turn that back on? I don't think we did. Let me turn that back on because there's no reason for that to be down. Right. I thought... Yeah, we did turn it back on. Maybe it just wasn't showing up. Oh, we turned off Nginx. I need to start Nginx again. So, oh, I spelled it wrong, didn't I? There we go. Okay, so hopefully that'll come back on here in a minute. Um, so what we did was, for testing, we were using React, the CI React 2, and then we had a CI React 3. Uh, but we had, I'd gotten to the point where, I mean, it's pretty confident that the load balancer was working. We were able to go to the IP address of the load balancer. It worked when one was down. So that part was working. I couldn't really test very much else out in that setup. It was time to test out the SSL. So this is now set um, to run. Uh, this is the main droplet that was on. I, I honestly could have just used two and three and not brought this in and left out two. It was just, I would rather have it be CI React and CI React 2 rather than two and three. So it's just kind of a naming thing for me, but it definitely could have worked with the other ones. I, I didn't have to pull that one out. So, um, I guess, to be honest with you, in hindsight, it may have been better to just set it up on 2 and 3, redirect everything, and then that way at least if the DNS was still going to the IP address for this droplet, it still would have worked. So that may have been a mistake on my part. I probably could have avoided some downtime if I would have just kept it going with uh, the 2 and 3. I just It was just slightly less work for me because I wouldn't have to go in and edit the config file for Nginx for the CI React uh, 3, so. So actually, thanks for asking that, Sebastian, because now after I kind of talked through that, I realized that, that that was a mistake. I should have left this one as is uh, so that it could handle any of the requests coming uh, from uh, if this, this IP address was still in the uh, DNS cache, so. Uh, I could probably move this out again and it would work. I wonder at this point if it's even worth it because uh, the cache should not last for that much longer. Oh, Patrick says uh, he has a nephew named Rohan uh, in my neck of the woods, which is Pittsburgh. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually really close to Pittsburgh. My, my wife and uh, kids are in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, so really... Uh, short drive uh depending on traffic uh takes me maybe like a half an hour to get into pittsburgh from where i am so uh rohan says it's a common name here in india most people from europe or stateside call me ron okay cool i mean i'll probably call you rohan i don't have a problem with that um i like the name 
Oh, okay. Sebastian says, now that I turn Nginx back on, it does work. So, I want to, I actually am really curious to see if I can reach this site from the IP address, though. And I can. Okay, so I take back what I just said about three minutes ago. I had thought that I had made a mistake by doing this, but it seems like you actually still can reach this droplet with the IP address for that. Um, so I guess it works. So I guess it would not have made a difference, and this was still um, probably the most efficient way to do it. I mean, it really only saved me maybe a minute and a half of work to do it like this as opposed to keeping the third one. But, yeah, okay, so we have them both healthy now. What I need to remember to do, though, so if you remember, the original intent of me doing this load balancing was to avoid any downtime when I updated the site because I had 30 to 45 seconds of downtime whenever I was rebuilding uh, the React um, app. So... I wanted to avoid that downtime, so I figured if I set up load balancing, I could update one droplet, and then all the traffic could go to the other droplet, and then I would switch droplets, update like that. The problem is that the load balancer is not recognizing when I take node down, because Nginx is still running. Even though it's giving an error, it's still running. So what I need to do is add another step to my update process, where I actually shut down Nginx in addition to shutting down Node. That is not really going to be a big deal because I have all my commands chained and I, I literally just copy and paste a big chain of commands when it comes time to update and I don't need to do anything and then I will probably find out an, a better way to update um, in time. Right now I just haven't decided on anything, but I'm going to look through some of the suggestions that I was given yesterday in the live chat as well. So this should work out. I just need to add a step. And uh, I, th I think we've accomplished uh, what, what I wanted to accomplish. And this actually did take longer than expected, but a lot of that was just due to the technical difficulties on my end and uh, just kind of more testing and making sure everything was working. All right, so we've reached the end. I'm quickly going to go through and check and see if there's any questions in the live chat that I missed. I don't remember really seeing any questions, but you never know. I, I, uh, I definitely could have missed it. So at this point, um, if you were just here for the uh, setting up the load balancer and you don't really care to stick around for the questions, thanks for watching, and I'll be back on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'll, I'll post the uh, topic on, uh, on Twitter uh, sometime on Monday uh, to let you know what I'll be working on then. Otherwise, if you have any questions, put them in the live chat now, and um, I, will, I will answer. If you don't want to put your question in the live chat, you can put it in the comments below the video. Uh, and if you don't want everybody to see your question, just direct message me on Twitter. My, um, the link to my Twitter account is in the description for this video. Okay, so I'm checking the live chat. Most of it at the beginning is just um, you all helping me to figure out if my... Um, if my video was, was any good, if the quality was any good. Looking through this chat, it's just crazy. It's like a wave between it's working, it's not working, it's working, it's not working. So, sorry again for that. I know I apologize already, but I, I, I do feel really bad. Um, there's not really that much I could do about it. I can't, I got to stream from home today.
Okay, so I've got through um, pretty much pretty much everything in the live chat now. I'm just going down. Okay, Sebastian said uh, he sent me a DM. Okay, I'll check that out um, as soon as the stream's over. Unless you want me to check it out now and answer you on the stream, let me know. Uh, Martin asks, um, what is SSL? So uh, SSL, uh, Secure Socket Layer. Correct me if that's not the right term. So basically, like when you go to a website and it has the little green like HTTPS with the lock on it, it has an SSL certificate. All right, that basically is it's showing that the data is encrypted. And uh, I see some of you are, are already answering Martin as well. So uh, make sure uh, you know check out the answers here because uh, there are a lot of very knowledgeable people in the live chat right now. Um, but yeah, that's what you need. If you want your website to be encrypted and to have HTTPS show up instead of just regular HTTP, you need an SSL certificate. Uh, I did do a video, I think two weeks ago, where I set up an SSL certificate. So check that out. It's when I was setting up, initially setting up the servers. If, if you want to know more about how to set it up, and I went through how to set up a free SSL certificate. There are paid ones that you can get. Yeah, Martin, don't worry about it. I, I asked for questions, so um, you can certainly uh, look that up if you want, but um, uh, I don't mind answering it right now. Yeah, so, yeah, Martin, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much all I know about SSL. So I don't know any of the details about, like, how the encryption works or anything like that, but if you have, um, if you're taking any type of user data, uh, like in a form or something, or, like, especially credit card data, definitely want to get an SSL. Uh, I recommend having an SSL on any site now because of um, uh, search engine optimization. Uh, I Google's search engine ranking algorithm is always like clouded in secrecy, but uh, we know that having an SSL is a factor. We don't know how big of a factor it is, but it could you know potentially help your rankings, your search engine rankings. So I recommend it for that. I also recommend it for. Um, just in general, like confidence uh, in browsers now, you know, it's definitely very visible whether a site has an SSL or not. So uh, even if you're not gathering user data, your users are going to feel better on your site. I mean, not everybody, but I certainly feel better on sites that um, that I see have the SSL, especially because you can get an SSL for free now. It just almost seems like you know, if I go to a site where there's not an SSL, I wonder, like, why didn't they take the time to do that? Because it's so easy to set up now, and it's free. Uh, you know, you may as well just do it. So even if they're not gathering my data, it just does make me wonder. Like, it, it's such a small thing, and it's so common now. Like, um, you know, you think that they would take a step. You know, that just a little extra step to make you feel more comfortable. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, like, if you're doing a, a commercial site, 100% recommend it, but if if you can spare a few extra you know minutes, and really depending on who you're hosting your site with, it can be as simple as just a few minutes to set it up. Sometimes it could be a little bit longer, but I would say, um, you know, it, it's probably not going to take any more than an hour to set it up, even if you're doing it for the first time. Uh, I, I, it's really it's really simple. I will say this though, depending on who you host your site with, they may not allow you to do the free SSL. You may have to pay for one. I know um, I have some stuff hosted on shared hosting with GoDaddy and at least the last time I checked, I was not allowed to set up a free SSL certificate. Um, but on other shared hosts like SiteGround, I am able to set up a free SSL and they make it really easy. I just have to click a button and they handle everything for me. So. Uh, it depends on your host. Certainly, if you're hosting with DigitalOcean, you have full control over your server. You have you can set it up. It takes a little bit more work, but uh, you can set up the free SSL.
Um, let's see. I'm just checking the uh, the chat again. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mart Martin and Thor are having a little disagreement here. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna weigh in a little bit. I mean, uh, Thor, I I definitely I understand where you're coming from, uh, but at the same time, I did ask for questions, so I'm not I'm not mad at all at, at Martin for asking a question that um, may seem uh, to some people like uh, kind of an easy question because I mean I would always just keep in mind like. You don't you don't know where people are at. So what seems like an easy question to one person may not at all seem like an easy question to another person. So um, especially if you've never worked with SSL before, like um, you know, a few years ago, setting up an SSL certificate was a really difficult question to me. Now that I've done it, you know, um, I don't know six maybe six times, maybe more, um, on DigitalOcean and um, done paid certificates and stuff. It doesn't seem like a big deal to me, but, um, you know, you, we, you just can't expect... It, this is my opinion now, obviously. I'm, I'm certainly open to hearing other opinions, but um, I, I don't necessarily think it's fair to um, expect people to know whether or not a question is an easy question or not. So definitely because I asked for questions and the topic, you know, the title of this video has the word SSL in it. So to ask a question like what is SSL is definitely relevant uh, to this. So um, so just so everybody knows, I, I will take any question pretty much um, on here and I'm not going to get mad if you ask a question that I've answered before or that seems really simple. It's, it doesn't bother me uh, at all. I used to teach high school. So... I'm like almost positive I'm not going to get a question here on this channel that is uh, that is worse than some of the questions that, that I got uh, when I taught high school. I mean, I, I love my students, but uh, occasionally you would just like get the craziest stuff. So um, that's my opinion. You know, I'm not worried about it. And Thor, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you're wrong about it, too. You're certainly entitled to your own opinion and you might have your own experiences with that. So. Uh, but at least on this forum, on my on uh, my shows, uh, feel free to ask whatever you want, and um, I'll, I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, Rohan says, uh, "I know this is a uh, this is from a project, but I'd love some regular backend and maybe networking walkthrough stuff. There aren't many good quality stuff out there, and most of them are really old." All right, cool. Uh, that's good to know. I do have a list of topics that I would like to make videos on probably not live streams uh, my live streams are always just gonna at least for now they're gonna be related to whatever I'm working on that day because the idea behind these streams were um, uh, I want people to see what my day-to-day -day work is like because I, I think it'd be useful for people who are interested in front-end development or people who just like me work kind of alone uh, to see what it's like for other people to do their jobs so uh, I want to keep the live streams like that, but I would love to do some like pre-recorded videos of uh, on specific topics and have them be a little bit more focused. Sometimes the streams can be all over the place because I'm answering questions and stuff, so it's a little bit scattered. Uh, and I know that probably is annoying to some people. You know, they don't have a lot of time. They want to come to learn something specific, and then they hear me going on and on about something totally different on the live stream. So. Uh, I'd love to do some videos that will be more focused and um, hopefully a little bit shorter, but more to the point on specific things. So I will add uh, your suggestions, uh, Rohan, to that list. Uh, I just haven't got to making the videos yet because I've been working so much on this site. Now that it's actually launched and I'm just kind of, I still have a long list of, of things that need to be added and changes that need to be made, but I don't have to go, it's quite you know, the same pace. Uh, so now I, I will be able to start making some of those videos. I actually wanted to start them this week, but then I couldn't go into work. And um, at home, it's just way too noisy with all my kids and everything. Uh, the only reason I've been able to even do the streams is because my wife has taken the kids somewhere else during the stream time. So I should be back into the office next week and should definitely be able to get some of those videos made. And those will be on the list, some, some more back-end networking things. 
I'll have to do my homework on it as well because that's not what I normally do, but I'll try to do my best and uh, get you some good information. Yeah, good point, Rohan. I, I didn't mention that. Uh, Cloudflare, Rohan says Cloudflare and Let's Encrypt are really easy and free for SSL. Um, so yeah, so for this particular project, I used Let's Encrypt to set it up. Uh, and there's some, there's some really good documentation from DigitalOcean on how to set that up. So if you just, uh, literally if you look up, um, and I think I linked to this in some of my previous videos uh, about setting up a server. So you can check that or... If you search DigitalOcean, um, how to set up an SSL, and then just put like the name. So if you're using Nginx, say how to set up SSL with Nginx. If you're using Apache, say how to do it with Apache. You'll find an article with it. Try to find whatever the newest one is. Uh, and then it'll take you through step by step. It's super easy. I've been able to get A plus scores for my uh, SSL certificates just from following uh, some of the instructions on DigitalOcean. So. Uh, yeah, try that out. Don't spend money on an SSL unless you really have to, uh, because the free ones are are certainly uh, they do, they do the job. Also, Cloudflare um, that would be even easier to set up. So check out Cloudflare. You can route your um, your name servers to Cloudflare, and then point them once they're there at Cloudflare. Then you can point your um, your A records to your server. So all the traffic will go through Cloudflare. So between the client and Cloudflare servers, everything will be encrypted, and then you don't even have to have uh, an SSL on your own servers. Now, the traffic between Cloudflare servers and your servers will be unencrypted if you do it like that, but at least from a client's perspective, it'll look like you have everything encrypted. And if you're not really taking any data from the client, then that's, that's certainly an acceptable way to do it. I wouldn't do it like that if I was taking credit card information, but... Um, but I, that's definitely an easy way to do it. Okay, cool. It looks like uh, Thor and Martin have kind of come to uh, um, um, maybe a little agreement here, and uh, things have kind of cooled down. So I uh, thanks, thanks, guys, for... For working that out, uh, I like to see everybody uh, getting along because I mean we're all just trying to learn and help each other here anyway. So, I mean, not that arguments will arise. I mean, we're all just we're all just people, right? We're not perfect, so arguments are going to happen. But um, I don't uh, I don't want to see the live chat for my shows turn into anything that's kind of like aggressive and people uh, feel like they they can't be open and, and asking things. So. Um, this at least should be uh, a nice place for people who of, of all skill levels to come and not feel like they need to um, be be ashamed of of what they know or don't know. So Rohan now says uh, I can learn the basics online, but there aren't really any intermediate level stuff out there. There's just basic and over the top expert level stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying there. It can be hard. There's a lot of basic stuff that's really easy, uh, and and you feel accomplished. You know, you do the uh, the basic tutorials, and then yeah, you're right. There's stuff out there that's just super hard to understand, and it's high level. Uh, the how do you get from one point to the other? So yeah, I mean, if if this if my stuff can be kind of that intermediate thing, because honestly, I would consider. I would consider myself to be entering into that intermediate level. You know, I've been doing this for a while. You know, I'm, I've been making I'm making sites. The sites work. You know, I'm getting good feedback from them. So uh, I'm definitely past that beginner stage. I think. You know, I'm not I'm not in the you know tutorial level of doing you know like Code Academy tutorials and stuff. Which uh, there's nothing wrong with those. I I did all the Code Academy tutorials, and occasionally I still go back to them if they do a new one. But um, you know, I'm past that level. But I don't. I'm not at the level of like getting pull requests accepted into major projects on GitHub and things like that, and uh, really like you know doing some cutting edge, you know, amazing stuff. So uh, hopefully I can, you know, if there's not good resources for that level out there, hopefully this can be a good resource. Uh, I definitely want this to be useful to people. If if it's not useful, then I'll probably stop doing it. So. Um, if there's uh, 
Okay, uh, Rohan had one more comment, and I think this will be the last comment unless somebody else says anything, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Rohan says uh, he's a student and can't afford all the like the intermediate courses that are usually too expensive. So I agree with you there. I, I shy away from the paid courses. Uh, not that I don't feel like they're valuable or I don't want to con- – you know, I'd love to contribute to somebody who's putting their time and effort into something really useful, you know, so I'm not saying don't pay for courses, but uh, for me, like, you know, I'm, you know, I got a family, I got four kids and a wife and everything. If I don't need to spend money on that, that means more money that can go towards my family. So, um, and I'm not, I'm not wealthy, at least by American standards. So, um, yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm always looking out for the free stuff, um, you know, as long as it's it's good. Uh, so yeah, my stuff. I don't have any plans to make any of my stuff paid at any point. I mean, maybe like, maybe at some point, if I really want to, I'll do like some of those affiliate link things that you see people do. I don't know, but. I don't have any plans to make money off of this, so it's going to be free at least for the. You know, foreseeable future. I mean, maybe if I started doing this a lot, like if most of my day was taken up by this kind of thing, then it might make sense to do some paid stuff. But at this time, you know, even if you don't have that much money, I'll I'll at least help you out as much as I can. Uh, Martin mentions out of college for a year and in the same place, uh, meaning like in that intermediate level. Above the tutorial level, can't get a job, Co- college, 100% waste, CS degrees don't do anything. Um, yeah, so I um, I also, I don't have a computer science degree. I have a business degree. So if I, I think I mumbled that last thing a little bit. So Martin's comment was college uh, 100, was 100% waste and CS degrees don't do anything. So I can't comment directly on that because I don't have a CS degree, but I do have a business degree. I will tell you, I would not have been able to get the job I have now unless I had a degree. It didn't have to be a computer science degree, but I had to have some degree. Now, I do work at a university, so they're a little bit... At a university, everybody has to have a degree, right? And I've actually um, had opportunities and been asked if I was interested in teaching this. I can't teach because I don't have my master's. So I can actually get hired to do this job for the university, but I can't be hired to teach people how to do the same job. So, I mean, I think it has to do with accreditation or something. So I'm not upset about it or anything. I'm not really sure if I'd want to teach anyway. But there are some places that will require a degree no matter what, even if it if it doesn't make any sense. So in that sense, a degree is not necessarily a total waste. Also, I would say, depending on the program, a computer science degree wouldn't be a total waste. There are definitely some programs in, co- in schools that are very prestigious and that companies will see and they'll be impressed that you get a degree from that particular program. Like near me, there's Carnegie Mellon. They have a really good reputation. I know the top tech companies frequently hire people from Carnegie Mellon, both students and professors from Carnegie Mellon. So, uh, And there are other schools like that. You know, probably it throughout the you know the United States and probably you know also throughout the world. So, um, depending on what field you're trying to get, like you're obviously trying to get a tech job, but you know if if you want to get into a specific field, like if you wanted to get into education, you probably need a degree. Probably government as well. They would look more toward a degree. So it just kind of depends. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent a waste. I I would not go back and get a computer science degree at this point. The only way I would I would see a computer science de- degree being of value to me right now is if I wanted to teach, I would go get my master's in computer science. Uh, so it just it does kind of depend on what your goals are and where you're at already, but um, but it, it would be more or less useful depending on where you're at. Uh, Rohan says, yeah, I'm in last year. Degree was a total waste. (laughs) So it's either stuff I already knew or old stuff that nobody cares. But having a degree is very important in Asia. Okay. Okay, so Martin says, schools like that are all about prestige and grades and stuff. I thought I was C student, so the stuff didn't appeal to me. 
yeah, that's true. To get into really prestigious schools, you do have to be like really good with the grades. So that is not for everybody uh, to get into. So um, yeah, but I think uh, the um, any degree can at least be helpful because there are still some companies some institutions out there that will refuse to hire somebody without at least a bachelor's degree so that being said even if if you got a degree in anything it could still be helpful now the nice thing about this field is there's a lot of places that do hire without a degree so if you don't have the degree uh don't worry about it you can probably still get a job if you do have a degree then uh, that gives you a little bit more opportunity than the people that don't. Uh, so it's probably not a total, total waste. But uh, it's actually, I, I'm actually trying to uh, address that at the school I'm at. Uh, I'm, um, I'm working on setting up internships for the computer science students to work on these same projects that I'm working on so they can get some real world experience um, and some things in their portfolio uh, because if you just go through your computer science classes and you don't do anything extra, you'd have the degree, but you wouldn't necessarily have a nice portfolio. And that's what companies care about more. I think a lot of companies care more about the uh, what work have you actually done. I know we're, we're hiring a, uh, a web developer right now at my university, and I'm involved in the hiring process, and I've been sorting through resumes. And uh, for me personally, I don't care where the degree is from at all. I don't even look at that part of the resume. It is a requirement. Um, yeah, I think a degree is a requirement. There might be uh, an exception for like if you have a lot of experience, you don't necessarily need to have the four-year degree, but I don't even look at it. What I want to see is, do you have a link to your GitHub profile? If not, automatically I'm a little bit skeptical because I think, you know, well, One, does this person not even know what GitHub is? Do I really want to have them working here? Or two, if they do have a GitHub but they don't have any code on it or they're embarrassed by the code and don't want to tell me about it, then what does that say? So uh, work on, definitely work on your portfolio regardless of whether you're in a computer science program or not because that's going to be the the most important thing. Okay, Martin says, um, I'm probably going to wrap this up soon because this has been a really long stream, so just a few more comments. Um, Martin says, grades uh, are nonsensical, measure of absolutely nothing. That is, that is harsh. I mean, it, uh, but uh, you are right. In, in a sense, I don't necessarily think grades are a, um, a good indicator of your success on the job all the time. I know um, I, have, I have a family member who... Um, I helped out a lot in high school and in college to help him get the grades enough to pass. And like, it was just barely passing. And he's had no problem getting jobs right off the bat, you know, getting jobs, uh, good jobs, and um, is able to just move from job to job, getting better jobs, and he's great at it. And he was never great at school. I was, um, I graduated at the top of my class in college, uh, what do they call it, Uh, summa cum laude, so top of everything. For six months, I couldn't find a job at all, and the first job I got was an assistant manager at a Burger King, which is a fast food restaurant. So, um, and I actually ended up quitting that job in a few months and taking a job as a waiter at a restaurant because it was actually better and I could make more money. So, I definitely say yes, like grades are not necessarily a good indicator of your ability to get a job or to do well at a job. So so I agree with that. Uh, Rohan says, uh, getting a BS degree this year, would love to get a master's degree, really on the edge about actually getting into it for it. Um, I would say, Rohan, it, just, it depends on what you want to do, uh, really. Uh, for computer science related stuff, I don't think a master's is worth it. In, in terms of the time and the money it takes to get it, unless you have a job in mind that you know needs that master's. So for instance, teaching would definitely need it. Um, or if you know there's a company you want to work for that requires that. So I would weigh that that out uh, because it's definitely, you know, 
your time, you're, you're losing all the money it will take to pay for the school, but you're also losing out on the money you would make during that same amount of time, assuming that you could get a job. So it's a big, I mean, it's a big investment and a big sacrifice to go for that master's degree. So, uh, if that's what you want and it's going to get you to the place you want to go, then go for it. But otherwise, uh, you know, definitely, you know, do the math on that and weigh that, uh, before you make a decision on it. Yeah, uh, Martin mentions, uh, shouldn't have to do the extra work. I went to school to get a job and I completed the steps. Yeah, I think that's like, um, that's the big thing that people are realizing now. Like I'm, um, I'm 31 and when I came up through like high school, uh, the idea was, you know, you go to college, you put in your time, you get your degree, you get the job. But then as I was starting to get up like later in high school and even into college, um, started to realize that's not necessarily how it works. And then now since I've been out of school, it's getting even worse. And I think it's the case now that going to college does not guarantee you a job anymore. Um, maybe it did at some point in the past, but now that is not the case. Uh, you, you need to do, you know, you don't, you need to, in addition to being in college, you need to have good internships and you need to have good connections. And, you know, that's, um, that's just the way it is. I honestly think having good connections is more important than pretty much anything else. Um, if you're doing computer science stuff, having a good portfolio and, and work is, is probably right up there, maybe tied with your connections, but uh, that's kind of the way it is. So um, if you're in school now, or if you're thinking about going to school, uh, going to college, you know, definitely take that into consideration. Uh, going through college, even if you're at the top of your class, it doesn't guarantee you anything in terms of jobs. Uh, it definitely didn't help me in terms of getting a job. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I wouldn't have gotten this job unless I had a degree, but it didn't really matter at all that what the degree was or what I was, you know, it was just like I had to have it. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check back in. Uh, the live chat just keeps, I can't get to the end. There's just more keeps, keeps coming. So let me cut this. Once we hit four o'clock, I'm just going to cut it off because that would have been like, that's a two hour stream. That's pretty, pretty long, especially if this ends up being low quality. I don't want to have to have people suffer through two hours of a low quality stream if they're going to watch this replay. Um, somebody asks, uh, uh, sen, sen, Senor Queso, is, that, uh, as, is there a playlist so I can watch this project from start to finish? Yes, there is. On Free Code Camp's channel, there is a playlist. It's called Live Coding with Jesse. But the project actually started on my own YouTube channel. So I link to that in the description for this video. So if you want to start from the very beginning, go to my own YouTube channel and start with a video that's titled, I think it's titled Building a Website as Fast as I Can. Because when I first got this project, it was like, hey, can you do this project in like six days? Uh, I did get a little bit extra time, so that was good. But uh, start with that video. And I think there's two videos on my channel, and then I switched over and got invited to um, to do live streams on Free Code Camp. So now I've been doing on Free Code Camp since then. Martin Martin mentioned he says I'll never get a job. World is messed up. Martin, I I definitely think you you can get a job. Uh, don't get discouraged. It, I've been there. Like I've been in your position in terms of uh, being out of school and not being able to find a job, or being able to find jobs that aren't good, that aren't what I want to do. Um, I've been there. It's really tough, and not just when I was out of school. There was a time when I had a job for a while, and then I quit that job, and then I didn't have a job for a long time, and I was just taking little side jobs, doing websites here and there, but really like low-paying type of stuff. And it was tough. And, and at that point, I had kids and everything. And then it, it was really tough because it wasn't just me. It was like I felt like I was letting down my family and my wife. So um, I definitely can be really tough when you can't find a job. But just, you know, don't give up and keep trying. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot of rejection. But keep applying to places and um, keep working on things. Uh, you never know, uh, you know, what will lead to something. You know, I had a connection that... Um, 
you know, my boss, my current boss now, um, I had, I had kind of known, you know, I had known him, we had talked, you know, here and there, uh, we, you know, we lived in the same town, but I actually got involved and we were both involved in the same volunteer organization before I got this job. So we had already kind of built up a relationship and he knew he could trust me, you know, that I was, uh, I was a trustworthy person before I got this job. So that I think kind of helped things because that's, it's really hard to tell from a resume whether somebody's trustworthy or not. So you never know what kind of connections will will help you. So uh, you know, just try to try to keep going, keep working on projects, and you know, if you got to take some job that you don't really want to do to pay the bills, you know, go ahead and do it. Uh, you never know; it may help you out. But uh, just try not to get discouraged. And I know it's easy for me to say that. It's, uh, but I've been there before. Uh, so. Uh, keep working through it. You know, you'll get something. Check out the uh, the free Code Camp forums. Recently, there's been a lot of good posts about people who have come through the same struggle and have finally found something. And they talk about how they went about doing that and the things they did that worked and didn't work. So if you haven't already checked out that forum and read about some of that stuff, I definitely recommend it. There's some inspiring stuff in there and um, maybe maybe helpful to you. Um Someone asks, and I'm sorry, I, I can't pronounce this name at all because uh, it's not in you know a normal alphabet that I that I know. Uh, but is is Moscow State University well known in the USA? I can honestly say that that sounds familiar, like I've maybe heard it before, but I don't think it's well known, at least not to me, uh, in the USA. Uh, Rohan says freelancing is great to make a portfolio mostly for web devs. Yeah, that's true. That's how I built my portfolio up was through freelancing. Uh, I like I had my own company kind of it. Uh, so I called it Jesse Weigel Digital Marketing. But in reality, I was pretty much a freelancer. So uh, I was able to make a lot of good connections and, and prove with real work that I got paid for uh, that I could do what you know, that I could do this job. So that really did help when I got the job that I currently have now was being able to show my portfolio and what I'd done. And when I was interviewing, be able to reference, you know, hey, I, I had this client before and we worked on this project and this is how we handled it. Because I did get questions about, you know, how did you, how would you handle this if this happened? And I was able to say, well, this actually did happen to me when I was working on this project. And I could talk about what I did. So, you know, freelancing is not... Freelancing was really tough, um, like on my family, especially on my wife. It, you know, she worried about it because you don't have guaranteed income. You know, one month you're you're doing well. The next month, you know, you you can barely buy any groceries. You know, so uh, it's tough. But in that in that sense, and it's tough because you have to market yourself to people. And I never liked that part of the job at all. But um, but it can definitely be a way to get nice. Um, uh, nice experience and get paid okay uh, Kenya says um, I'm a mathematician I found out that there's more work as a developer than a mathematician unless it's in big data and stuff so I started free code camp and it's really good awesome yeah I'm glad that you like uh, free code camp stuff so um, uh, I did free code camp stuff and I definitely, um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend that. Um, I'm actually, I never finished my free code camp, like all the certifications you can get. I really want to go back and do that at some point. Uh, it's just, it's hard to justify taking time to do that when I could be doing work that I'm getting paid for. So I still really want to do it though someday uh, because I, you know, I just, I like free code camp so much. It'd be great. Um, to be able to have a post one day and say, hey, look, here's my certificate. Uh, I think that would be cool. Uh, yeah, Kenya, uh, it's hard. I feel very nervous uh, and anxious to find a job. I, I know how you feel. Um, yeah, that nervousness is, um, 
that's tough. It's tough to get over. Uh, it's hard to put yourself out there, you know, and take the chance and then get disappointed with things. So, um, just keep on trying, you know, it, it gets easier. The more you try to do it, it'll get easier. And, um, even, um, you know, if you can't try to do something, uh, like this, like I, um, you know, a live stream, a YouTube video, or like a meetup or something like that, where you can get out there with other people and it'll help you feel a little bit more comfortable. I was super um, kind of paranoid about other people seeing my code. Uh, I thought like people will see my code and they'll like, re you know, think it's terrible. And then like they'll tell my boss and my employers that my code is terrible. And then like, I just had kind of this irrational fear of that, and I remember um, about a year ago, I was at a conference, and someone told me, um, I had kind of mentioned my, my fear of this, because I was even afraid to put my code on GitHub. I had stuff on GitHub, but it was in, like, private repositories, and um, they, you know, they said, like, don't, you know, don't worry about it. Just, you know, put your stuff out there, and most people are going to be helpful, and, and so what if some people are mean about it, you know, just... Um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to do that. And, um, I didn't act on that right away, but I, it stayed in my mind and, um, and that ended up being really helpful advice. And, uh, I actually, I don't even remember the name of the person that told me that I wish I did, but, um, I'm really glad that they, they did tell me that, uh, and that helped. And then now, you know, a year later, not only do I have stuff on GitHub, but I'm live coding, you know, on YouTube, which, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, I guess, even more of a scary situation because people can immediately tell me, uh, hey, you're doing terrible stuff. Uh, that's never happened, <laughs> but it's been remarkably positive uh, feedback for me and it's, it's helped me uh, to get better. But um, yeah, I, I just, the only way to get over the nervousness is just to get yourself out there and, and um, just kind of face it. Awesome. Uh, Rohan says, uh, really good talking here. Um, don't, he says, I have SA and usually don't talk too much in chats, but I feel good here. I'm sorry, what's SA? I'm blanking here. What's that an abbreviation for? Um, situational anxiety? Is that, maybe I'm not, uh, maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Actually, I, um, I definitely understand. I have a son. My oldest son has um, obsessive compulsive disorder and uh, has a lot of anxiety. And um, so I have a lot of, uh, of sympathy uh, if anybody's struggling with stuff like that. I know it can be just super, super hard. And uh, I know too, I'm, I'm usually not, it probably sounds weird because I'm, I'm doing stuff on YouTube now, but I like never talk on, you know, online forums or chats and things like this I'm always like just kind of staying in the background um, but now now that I'm doing more like this I just I wish I would have started sooner oh, okay Rohan says I guess we should start a uh, discord server so or an IRC yeah whatever um, Whatever you all think would be the best way to, to do this, to have a chat, it would be kind of cool um, to have some sort of group um, to chat where it's, you know, it doesn't have to be just during the, uh, the live stream. So, um, let me know uh, what you all decide and uh, so I can, I can join up. Okay, so uh, Thor says, Free Code Camp already does have a, a Gitter thing. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. They do have Gitter. Um, oh, okay, uh, Kenya says, uh, thank you. This is really helpful. Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I could be of help. And um, you know, feel free to ask anything, uh, or you can direct message me on Twitter or whatever. Uh, ask it in the comments. I'm more than happy to help. Um, <laughs> FCC Jesse is the channel just created. Okay, cool. So is this 
so we have hashtag FCC Jesse sounds good. That was created where? Are we still talking about Gitter or uh, IRC? Oh, shoot. It looks like the stream's getting terrible again. So um, maybe this would be a good time to wrap it up uh, if the stream's the stream quality is going down. Um, oh, on, on Freenode. Okay, so... So on Freenode, there's now a channel that's FCC Jesse. So FCC J E S S E, which I'm really flattered that the channel has my name in it. But um, so uh, yeah. So if anybody is is uh, still listening, which we actually have picked up in viewers now, it's it. I'm really surprised that now after two hours we picked up more viewers, but uh, not a lot of viewers, not as much as usual, but. Um, yeah, check it out on Freenode, uh, channel FCC Jesse, and we keep the chat going, and, uh, I'm gonna try to join in, and just so you know, this chat, uh, I definitely want to keep it as a very, very friendly place where the criticism is gentle, and, um, you know, everybody tries to get along, not in, like, a false peace kind of getting along, like, I'm definitely fine with, uh, heated debates and things, but... I just, I'm not fine with people being mean or rude. So um, let's, let's all try to keep it that way and keep it really uh, open. Um, and uh, I think that'll be the best for people who maybe are a little bit nervous about uh, speaking out and, um, and asking questions or things. So um, yeah, so if you're watching now or if you hear this recording and uh, you want a place to go, you're a little bit nervous, you know, check out that you know, that channel, uh, on Freenode, and, um, you know, you'll get, you'll get some, some advice, I, you know, I don't know, there's a lot of people in this chat now that know, know what they're talking about, and I, I know what I'm talking about, at least some of the time, and, uh, so, I'll do my best to help out, and I'm sure they will, too, so, uh, awesome, so I think this was a really productive, uh, video, I'm gonna wrap it up now, um, because, well, we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, which was the load balancing with the SSL pass-through. Uh, we also went over the WordPress API a little bit, uh, which was requested. So um, hopefully uh, you all got a little bit out of that. And if you want to see more about any of that stuff, let me know. Uh, we also got a lot of uh, good advice on finding jobs and kind of getting through that. And now we have a, uh, a free node channel where we can chat uh, even outside the live chat. So this was probably, uh, you know, one of the, a really, really productive uh, live chat. Sorry about the poor quality. And if you're watching this video later on, I'm sure it's not going to be a great quality either. Probably only like 480 uh uh, P uh, replay quality. So sorry about that. They're not all that quality. Most of the other ones are uh, are at least 1080p. So um, I will be back on Monday at 2 p.m. I like vaguely remember that I might have a meeting on Monday. I don't have it on my calendar, but I'll have to check my email. So if I have a meeting during that 2 p.m. time period, I will make sure that I reschedule for a different time that same day, and I will post that on Twitter. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter if, if you want to get that update. Uh, it'll also be like, there'll be an update on the free code camp channel. So I think it'll like pop up if you have notifications, um, enabled, uh, in your browser or like on your phone. So, um, I, uh, so hopefully I, I don't have a meeting and I can do it at a normal time. But otherwise, I'll still do it. I'll see you all on, um, on Monday. And have a great weekend.